So then we can start. Okay. Okay. So I'm basically going to ask you a simple question. And please answer in the poll. I need to know your mood. <laughs> Let's share results. Huh? I'm sharing you the results here. You can see here uh, at the moment, 20% uh, feeling great. Everything is awesome. Some people are not so good. All right. Okay. And then we have another about 15, 16% good. Okay. okay. But most people are feeling great today on a Sunday. Attending a class on a Sunday, is that great? <laughs> uh, okay. So most people are feeling great. Some are feeling awesome. Okay. Uh, some not so right. So I'll try to make this presentation very engaging, not just talk, 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 but also engage you as much as possible. Uh, so let's begin. Okay. Uh, I'm going to end this poll now. Now, uh, this poll is, or this uh, talk or session is about social media for research. Okay. And we're going to look at social media. Me personally, I have not published, in, I mean, I publish in journals as co-writer, but I don't spend much time on conventional media like uh, normal publications. But I, I'm, I'm very much into social media, and I know a lot of the secrets, because I work with a lot of academics and secrets on how to make your research very powerful, using the social media to, to spread the awareness of it. And we're going to look out through the whole cycle. So I'm going to start with the, the first slide, which is, uh, hmm... Let's see if we can load here. Okay. Now, my question to you is, okay, I know everybody's using social media. Uh, can you share with me what kind of social media tools do you uh, use now for research? Anyone to share? Any tools that you use for research? Maybe you can share Twitter. Okay, Karim, Prof. Karim is using Twitter. He's Prof. Karim from Malaysia. Uh, databases. Okay, social media databases. Pinterest. Okay, Anja, Anuja is using Pinterest. Um, what else do we have here? Google and databases. Karim uses Storyfy. Amrita uses... So, you see, we, we're using different tools. Uh, the question is how effective they are and so on. Okay. Uh, LinkedIn. Okay. Someone's using LinkedIn, YouTube, Google, PubMed. PubMed is not social media, but it's... it's yeah, or maybe it's part social media. I'm not sure. I wouldn't classify that. Okay. Google and YouTube. Okay. LinkedIn, okay, people are using LinkedIn here, okay, so that we have actually people actually using various tools, so I hope when we, we continue the conversation that we actually share among each other, among one another, uh, some of the tools that we use and how we use it, because it's not so much using it, it's how you use it, okay, okay, so let's, and one of the things we have to keep in mind is, no matter how much you use social media for research, Especially if you're talking about publications, it's really if your publication is no good, uh, it's you might not still have any impact uh, using social media. But if you sometimes your publication is really good, but it just doesn't get enough exposure and you don't get enough views and citations and so on. So we will look at that how we can amplify our research, whether it's publications or the research process itself, using social media. Okay. Okay, so this is a nice statement by Paul Knopfler. He says, basically, savvy scientists must increasingly engage with blogs and social media. Even if you choose not to blog, you can certainly expect your papers and ideas will increasingly be blogged about. So there it is, blogged or be blogged, or social media or social media aids. <laughs> so... While we're at the blog, okay, how many of you actually blog? I mean, you're doing research, right? How many actually blog your research here? You know, we, we could do a poll. Let me just do a poll. I'll just create a poll quickly to find out. That's a very important question. I didn't actually... Let me just create a poll. Uh, uh, research, uh, blog your research. This is very important. I'm going to do a... Uh, let me just... I'm just creating the poll on the fly. Yes, no. Uh, I think this is very important. I think blog, to me, is the most effective tool for your own learning, okay, and sharing, okay? Let's see. How many of you actually uh, blog, uh, research and blog? Let's get some numbers here, okay? So don't really use it here. Blog requires some effort, but if you're creative about it, you can use it. I think blog, to me, that has benefited most in my learning because that's where you do your reflections, the higher order thinking skills, and, and you can reflect upon what you have learned, and then you get feedback and so on. So we can see here, uh, no, okay? At the moment, the majority says no, and yes. We have actually some have yes, okay? So those who said yes, maybe you can share in the chat box with, with uh, us, how did, you lo how did you feel using blogs for sharing your research or communicating your research or, or how you use, I'm not sure. 
Okay. So how we'll get back to how to use blog for research. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so don't worry about that part. But uh, how do you, some of the people use here? Okay, Karim, I think blogging uh, about our research is good idea. Okay, it's not an idea; it's a fact. People do it. <laughs> okay, uh, me, I, 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 re my research is the blog. Because <laughs> I say, why publish in journals that nobody reads when I can publish and a lot of people read? Uh, but I'm not exactly an academic, so I, I, I don't see that as uh, as an academic. You have to publish a lot of papers. I think that's very important. Yes. Okay. Okay, somebody is playing with, uh, okay, 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 but we'll get into blogging more. I think it's not just about promoting yourself, blogging, blogging is actually a very powerful tool too. Uh, is somebody here playing around with the screen? Somebody's got the presenter link here. If you have, please tell me. I need to deal with you personally. <laughs> okay, so you can see the poll here. 72% of participants are not blogging. Okay, and 22% are. Now, that means if, if I can convince 78% after this workshop to start blogging, I think my webinar has been a success. But, but blogging is a very tough issue, but it's a very powerful tool. And we'll get back to blogging. And Prof. Karim is already sharing his blog, and I can share with you my blog later and so on. But, you know, it's a very powerful tool. It's not just for promoting yourself, I said, it's a powerful to improve your thinking skills, improve your ability to reflect upon what you have learned and what you have shared and, and your ideas and concepts and so on, okay? So I'm going to end this poll or share the results, okay? You can see the results here. You have to mouse over to see the, the, the bars to see who got what, huh? You can see the results here, okay? Okay. Okay, there, I'm going to end the poll now, okay? Thank you. Uh, okay. So... Okay, so the chat is going full steam. That means uh, people are awake and alert. Okay, now this is an example I just want to share with you. Usually I have animated slides, but because I'm using it doing a webinar, my slides are animated, so I'll ask questions. Now this is based on my findings uh, when I communicate with people and ask people, how long does it take to publish a book? Well, you can see one to two years. And, 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 and when you, if you do very innovative research, especially in technology and so on, uh, by the time you publish the book, your, 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 your whatever you want to share is out dated you know <laughs> it might be not relevant <laughs> anymore so this is one of the challenges in publishing books uh, especially innovative stuff and same with the paper that's one thing i don't like to publish papers in general is that it, it's published like three to six months later and in e-learning that's like three four years of <laughs> common uh, learning so it, it kind of outdated again but the good thing about social media is when you start using social media is that you can publish anytime at the moment and boom and you can get feedback straight away and, and you can move on okay but of course if you're talking about the sh uh, publishing and sharing and at the same time people stealing your ideas uh, then you have to be a bit careful about using social media but we'll talk about that uh, as we go along okay <laughs> so you can see that the benefit of, of, of social media is that you can you can post your ideas immediately and you can potentially get feedback, potentially, and not necessarily get feedback, potentially get feedback immediately, and you can move on your thinking and ideas and, and improvise it, okay? Uh, how to use blog prop, uh, property, property for research. We'll get that later. It's, I think you're saying properly, not property, <laughs> okay? I'm not sure about property, but uh, properly, yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Huh? Okay. Uh, so this is an example, because I, I work, I've been working in a medical university for... Uh, uh, six years now and this is one of the biggest problems in, in, in terms of medical knowledge you can see here uh, the rate of medical knowledge is doubling every uh, let me just highlight that uh, okay is but every why is that color I'm just playing around here wait <laughs> every why is okay forget about that that's not important Doubling every three years currently and projected to double every 73 days. And if you looked at the chart previously, <laughs> by the time you publish papers and publish books, whatever you have uh, researched, is not outdated, but it's, it's, it's getting out of, out of the picture and things have evolved since then. Uh, so in our research output today might be outdated by the time it is published using traditional channels. Uh, traditional channels, unless we... Okay, so I'm not saying you should not use traditional challenges like books and journals. You should do it because that's, that drives you up the rank of, of being an academic, especially if you're an academic and so on, and, and the respected even if you want to become a professor. But uh, to, to, to really um, move the bench, is, it's very important also to use social media to actually expose your idea early and capture it. We'll share. If you expose your idea early and using the right licenses, you capture your idea and, and publish it in, in creative ways. Okay?
Publishing is not about all about publishing journals. You can get your copyright or copy left by actually using social media. Okay, I think that's very important. Okay, uh, but your university doesn't get it yet. You, most universities only get publications in journals with impact factor and blog peer review and so on. But they don't really get the power of social media to actually have impact. Because it's not just about your impact factor. It's also about the impact of your idea. Has Does it have an impact on society and, and, and so on? Okay, so we have to rethink the way we share. Okay, no sound. Utara, if you have no sound, if the other people can hear me, that means uh, your volume is probably off on silent mode or you need to increase your volume. Okay. Okay. Procurement says impact means many, many things. True. Okay. So let's go and explore a bit. Okay. So in today, uh, we've already gone about 15 minutes or 10 minutes. Today, I'm going to look at social media first quickly, very quickly. What is social media? I think most of you know. No problem. And then we're going to look at the research cycle. How can we use uh, social media in the, the full cycle of research, which is usually discover, and then you do your research, and then you get it peer-reviewed or applied and so on, and then you publish it, and then moving forward. So we're going to look at that, and, and the tools I share can actually be used for all uh, aspects of the research cycle. However, I'm just going to focus on them where they are very powerful in, in different aspects in the research cycle. Okay. The, can I hear now? <sighs> Can we just, I, I have to find out now, is my audio a problem or not? My sound? Because some people have no have problem hearing. I can hear you. Yes, audio is okay. So some people have a problem here. Uh, and and if, if some people have a problem, that means they have a problem personally on their device or on the in, in, internet. Okay. So for those who have a problem, I think there are people in the chat box willing to help you. Uh, if they cannot help you, I wish I could help you, but they will uh, interfere with our 56 participants in this uh, webinar. Okay? Okay, thank you very much. So, so back again to the presentation you can see here. We're going to look first at social media. Okay? So there are a lot of definitions of what social media is. Okay? But I, if you ask me, social media is an umbrella term for web-based or mobile technology that empower us to do a lot of things, but these are the, the things that I like about social media, empower us to think, okay, think for ourselves. That's one of the things that social media is, is driving governments nuts, is that people are able to get together and think about what, beyond the government, but this is not a political <laughs> webinar, but yes, think. And the ability to create, you know, uh, social media is web two. There are two sides of the same. The ability to create stuff. With social media now, you can create stuff, and you can do so many things that you couldn't do, and you can share it online and some people get millions of views, even billions, to expose their ideas and, and creations. And of course, it's very powerful to learn. Uh, I would not be able to communicate with you today uh, if, if, we, if we didn't have, uh, not social media, web-based uh, technologies. Okay, and also be able to do stuff, okay? Connect, you know, the social media empowers us to connect. Uh, and, and share, of course, that's, that's very powerful. And also communicate and collaborate. I don't want to go into each different term now, but we will cover this throughout this uh, session on how social media are weapons of mass destruction. Uh, yes, okay, Prof. Karim. <laughs> uh, okay. But before we go into the... the I, I really want to uh, alert you about the challenges first, because I could go and say social media is so great, but there are challenges with social media. And, and, and these are the key things you need to look into and overcome before it really impacts the university and society as a whole. Because if, if you don't overcome the challenges, uh, not overcome, but are aware of the challenges, that might have a very negative impact. Because social media has a lot of negative aspects or could have a lot of negative aspects. It's like, a, it's like a, uh, what do you call it? It's like, uh, what do you call it? Hydrogen. Hydrogen can be, for you, for, or helium, you know? I mean, you can use it for two sides. You can use it for good or bad. Like nuclear. Nuclear waste, nuclear weapons, and uh, nuclear plants. You know, you could use it for good and bad. So the same with social media. They, they can be very powerfully both ways. Okay, so here are some of the challenges, technical challenges. As an educator, how do how many of you feel that social media is overloaded? It's just too many tools, and you just get lost in this world of social media. Uh, am I making sense here? How many of you are lost? There's like so many tools. What do I do? <laughs> you know. Uh, so that's that's one of the challenges. You get overwhelmed. You know, so that's one of the technical challenges. You've got too many tools out there and where to start. So I hope this presentation will help you to identify at least a few tools to get you started if you have not already started. Okay. 
Okay, don't worry. Get conf- conf- if somebody gets confused, by the way, that is the essence of great learning. If you're not confused, you're not really learning. That means you're covering things you already know. So don't be worried about being confused. Confused is exciting. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, firewall blocking. This is one of the problems uh, with, with social media is that universities block a lot of sites. Okay. So like I said, I want to implement YouTube with my students. Okay. So then suddenly the university has blocked YouTube. Or, or more like a Facebook. You know, you want to use Facebook for research. University has blocked Facebook. Okay. So these are technical challenges that, yes, we could use Facebook, but the university has already blocked us from accessing it. So we can't use it during working hours. We can only use it from home or our mobile devices and so on. So it becomes a problem. So this is another technical challenge with social media is that sometimes you have ideas and your school has ideas, but the IT department and the university has different ideas and it gets blocked out. Okay. Okay. Then, of course, accessibility. It doesn't work well for all kind. Of, I I used to do some research on disabled people. So, I mean, in different areas, you might have hearing problems, you might have sight problems. Technology is getting more friendly in that way, but still, there are issues in different tools that whether they can use it effectively if you if you're blind or if you're deaf and so on. And the same applies to usability and ease of use, which is, are both connected. Okay, not all tools are very easy to use, and especially if you're not IT savvy at all, and you get into these tools, you might get frustrated, even with Twitter or, or Facebook and so on. You get frustrated just because of you don't feel it's easy to use. And ease of use is very much a personal experience. Okay. Okay. So here we are. Okay. So then. That is the technical challenge. Now we're going to look at some of the sharing challenge. Please share in, 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 the, in the chat box some of your challenge in terms of sharing. Okay? One thing is information overload. When you go to social media, a lot of people give up and say, Oh my God, it's just too much stuff there. <laughs> I don't have time for this. You know, I, I, have, I have to do my research, administration, teaching, and now you ask me to go to social media and, and, and mess around with all these people just babbling about when they're going to have lunch and so on. <laughs> uh, so... Yes, information already is a big challenge, okay? But if you're smart, uh, uh, it took me 10 years to figure out, <laughs> ignore the noise and, 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 and be able to zoom in on the juice. Uh, that is really the, the, the skill that you can develop. Uh, and I hope during this presentation you'll get some ideas on how to zoom in on the, on the juicy stuff, okay? And then content ownership. This is one of the challenges universities don't like. If you were to publish your presentation, what, which I've done, let me just show you an example, huh? I'll do some screen sharing here. No, no, I won't do screen sharing. I will actually share with you the link, okay? I will put the link, okay, in the chat box, okay? I'm putting the link in the chat box. I shared my presentations. This presentation I shared in, this, in the link. And, and if you notice, I use SlideShare, right? Now, if I publish in SlideShare, uh, will the university accept it or not? You know, I you have, have not mentioned anything now, but... The content is no longer residing within the university. Now it's open to the public. I made it available to the public. Uh, and people beyond it are benefit. So who owns this content? Is it the university? Is it me? Or is it SlideShare? You know? The, definitely it's not the university anymore, right? The, I mean, you could publish in the, the on your e-learning portal and so on, but the content is open to the public. Now, this is, is a real challenge for some universities. They don't like it at all. They don't want you to publish. They want it to only be within the university. And this also is a problem when you talk about research. You publish your research, and then it gets out there, and, and, and that's even a more challenge, uh, especially if you... Uh. So, okay, here Prof. Karim is saying, definitely copyright not owned by SlideShare. So, we'll get back to this uh, ownership. And then confidentiality. Uh, I work in a medical university, so we have had, uh, not any, I don't think we have any more, but we had cases a few years back, students taking pictures uh, of themselves in a hospital setting, and, and, and apparently some patients got into the picture, uh, and, and, and they went into social media. Luckily, it didn't go viral or anything, but it exposed some patients to, 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 to the open world of social media, but luckily, it didn't get exposed beyond that, but we're talking about confidentiality, right? You're supposed to protect the uh, people's interests, but it, it gets exposed by, by accident. or So that's where, for example, IMU, what we have done is that we have social media guidelines for students and staff. So if they want to use social media, they have to apply, apply this, uh, the guidelines, which advise them, like, if, if you're in a hospital setting or you're with patients, you cannot just take pictures. You're not even allowed to take pictures. Maybe you could take a picture if you get <laughs> a written permission from, from, the, from the patient because you're doing it for educational purposes, not for just for fun. Okay, so that's one of the channels of confidentiality. And also the quality. I mean, if you publish 
going back to research, if you publish in a journal, it has an essence of, of quality. It has some control and quality. But if I go on state myself as uh, I'm Dr. Zed al or Captain al Zed and I, I know everything about uh, medical, I'm a great doctor and I had heart surgery, I can just go out and say that in social media and nobody can actually stop me. You know, I mean, Facebook could block me from doing it, but they pr probably they won't. So what kind of quality are we talking about? How do we control the quality in the open social media? And who's the authority? You know, in, 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 in research communities, you have some authority rules, right? But in social media, there doesn't seem to be any rules on who is the authority. You know, Dr. Doogie or someone can just become an authority in, in, in psychology, in psychiatry, and, and put themselves online and, and put danger, a lot of people in danger. So there's a lot of challenges. Uh, these are some of the challenges in, in social media. And what about your this one here? Your work-life balance, okay? So these things are not supposed to turn you off social media, but you need to keep them aware when when you talk about social media. These are technical and sharing challenges, okay? So any questions about the technical and sharing challenges before we move on? Uh, you might have other ones, but these are the ones I found most uh, intensive uh, when we talk about. Huh? I see people typing here. Anyone? Other ones? Who own copyright? For what? Okay, talking about slide share again. <laughs> okay. We'll get back to copyright soon. Don't worry. Okay. The research paper. Okay. Okay, there's a lot of great discussion going on. Let's move to the next. Okay. We talk about plagiarism. I'm going to show you a great case of <laughs> plagiarism. Okay, I was using Creative Commons license to publish a, a, a presentation called The DNA of a 21st Century Educator. And it's a long story. I'll make the present, uh, the link available in the chat box uh, now. Okay, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do screen sharing and I'm going to walk you through how people plagiarize. Just presentation. And I'm using a license to allow you to use my content. You just need to give recognition. But people still will plagiarize to a certain extent. Okay, I'm just going to do screen sharing. Just give me that. How my content <laughs> was actually plagiarized in China or Hong Kong. I'm not sure where. The, all the evidence has been taken down, but I made all the evidence available. Okay, I'm just going to share with you this link in the chat box here first. Okay, this is the link, so you can just go to this blog post. Okay, so we're looking at, can you see, can you see my screen? Everyone, can you see my screen before I go on? In the chat, can you see my screen or not? Can we just have some comment in the chat box? Can you see my screen? I, oh, you cannot post a comment? Well, okay. That's new to me. Okay. So now you can see here. Again, you can see. This is a long story. So I don't want to go through the whole story. You can see. This guy here. Is this me? <laughs> okay. Okay. iPad. No. Okay. Cannot see from iPad. Okay. If you cannot see, I, I will not do that. Then I'll stop my screen sharing. Because some people are on their iPad. Okay. Uh, stop screen sharing. Okay. Everybody got my blog post in the chat box. I recommend that you. Uh, I'll yeah, I'll re I'll post it again in the chat box. Please uh, just click on the blog link, and you can scroll down and you can see how <laughs> how uh, sophisticated their plagiarism is in uh, in approaching uh, just doing a presentation. And the worst part is I'm not I'm even sharing it to allow you to use it. You just need to give recognition. But people still go to extent to use it as their own idea and maybe get a, gain a project or a contract and so on. Okay, you can you can see from this picture here, uh, this DNA even plagiarized to the extent that you can see here my logo is all taken away, and then you have the my, the company logo, general plan from a Hong Kong company. Okay, uh, I, I I could have sued him, but I didn't do that because I don't have time for that kind of thing. But I wrote a story about it instead, and, and some people are actually using it for examples of typical uh, plagiarism. Okay, but we will go beyond that. <laughs> okay, so have fun with that article. You should read it. But that again is not going to push me away from using social media. I've been using social media after that much more. It doesn't stop me from using social media, but it does happen, and you have to deal with it. Okay, and that guy apparently knows I've the, I know about his mistake, and, and he's feeling guilty. So don't worry about that. Uh, just to share with you quickly, I actually notified one of the top uh, newspapers in Hong Kong uh, about this uh, issue, and they apparently knew who it was, and they called him by phone and asked him 
what do you think of this? Uh, so he knows that one of the largest newspapers in Hong Kong knows about it. And the Hong Kong newspaper asked me, should I sue them or not? If I were to go and sue them, it would have been a big headline in Hong Kong uh, among the plagiarism and copyright issue. But I decided not to because I just don't, I don't feel the re- uh, necessary. Necess- I didn't feel that time passion to go through all the process of uh, suing for, because it's just a slideshow presentation. It didn't take me that long to develop anyway. But I wanted him to know that I know that what he's done is wrong and he will look very bad himself. The fact that a newspaper will contact him and give him really bad and this article is out there uh, and it's been viewed more than a thousand times so uh, he's definitely been exposed so uh, I'm fine with that <laughs> but that's the risk of sharing but I got a good story out of it so I'm very happy in that sense that I got that he cheated on me because I wouldn't be able to share this story with you today so <laughs> okay so the next okay so how do how to protect my intellectual work? So before I start now in the chat box, how would you protect your intellectual work if you were to use social media? How would you protect your social, uh, your, social your research, or even your uh, teaching content? Okay, so here are some solutions here. Uh, upload PPT as PPS. Uh, Patented, patent, yeah, but can, I'm not sure. Patent research paper, uh, research content. Can it? I don't sure that can be patent. Uh, it can be copyrighted. Uh, okay. Uh, we have Prof Karim here, which is an expert on uh, <laughs> from Malaysia, who's expert in copyright. <laughs> you copyright it. What about copyleft? Okay, how many of you know about copyleft? Okay, yes, unfamiliar with copy left. People laugh when I say copy left. You can just Google copy left now and you'll discover there's something called copy left. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, let's go to the next slide and discuss how can we protect. Okay, how many of you heard about copy left? Okay, you can see on the graphic here left, left, left. <laughs> okay, no idea. Okay. <laughs> Okay, but don't, you don't need to worry about copyleft. I think more importantly, are you familiar with Creative Commons or not? Creative Commons. Okay, I'll, I'll put it in the chat box here. We'll get it. Okay, we'll get it anyway. Creative Commons. Okay, what, you know what we're going to do? We're going to watch a video. This video was done for uh, the Middle East about copy, uh, not copy left, but about copy Creative Commons. Okay, so, which is a form of actually copyright, but We'll, we'll look at the video now, and then we'll get back. We we'll get three minutes looking at the video. It's meant for the Middle East, but it, the, I, that's my favorite video on talking about Creative Commons. Eh? So let's watch it together. You're wondering how we're going to do that, okay? Okay, let's uh, play the. Okay. Can you see the video? Arab world has countless creative people and intellectuals that can inspire us with their writing, art, music, research and discoveries. Such creativity is a treasure that should be shared with the world. A lot of creative people want to share their ideas so they can grow and develop. This piece of writing is brilliant. Can we work together? Wow! Can we sample your tune? Oh, look at this. May I share your art on my blog? How genius. Can I use your formula? The internet makes this possible, but strict copyright regulation sometimes gets in the way. Meet Creative Commons. Creative Commons encourages content creators to collaborate and share their work with others. This way, together, we can maximize the power of the internet, nurture a spirit of innovation, and encourage exchange of experiences and culture. Creative Commons offers a series of content rights licenses that are built on copyright laws. And they spell out how you want your work contributed and shared while still protecting your creative rights. What are the licenses? This sign attributes the work to its owner. How do you want to be known? This sign prevents the user from using the creative work for commercial purposes. This sign indicates that the user can use the work but cannot apply any changes to it. No remixing. This sign 
gives the permission for modifying and distributing the creative content, but the user must share their work under the same terms as the original. Keep it moving forward. So how do you get a license for your work? Easy. Visit www.creativecommons.qa or creativecommons.org. Go to the licensing section and answer a few simple questions about how you want to share your work. Allow commercial users of your work? Allow modifications of your work? Select a license. Click Submit and you'll generate a code for your license that you can easily apply to almost any digital work. Now your work can be shared openly and you will have the confidence your rights are respected. You can even search for other works under Creative Commons. It's a worldwide community. Share your ideas for the whole world to discover them. Help unlock the massive potential within the Arab world and share it with everyone. Creative Commons. Okay, uh, some of you might have had problem with the volume. Don't worry about the. I shared the link in the in the chat box. So you can watch it again. Uh, but I just wanted. It's, it's a very nice introduction to Creative Commons. Okay, uh, but we will go through it now. Don't worry. So even if you missed the video, it's fine. <laughs> but I think it's a very nice video. Uh, okay, uh, and again, just to highlight, uh, all the all is here already in the slide share. You can click on the links lower level. There's all there. Okay. Okay, this is a very overwhelming image uh, and so on. Okay. Now, how many of you publish any content using Creative Commons? Here, we have 65, which is quite good. 65 participating today. How many of you actually publish today using Creative Commons? I, okay, I'll do a poll. I think this is such an important question. I'm going to do a poll. Let me just create a poll quickly. If I can load here. Uh, okay, we don't need to do a poll. We don't have time for it. Okay. Yeah, no, never heard of. Okay. Actually, when you publish in social media today, you can actually state that uh, you're using a Creative Commons license in as you publish. Okay. Okay. So none of you know about Creative Commons? Hmm. None of you has published it so far? Well, you must know. I think that's, from this presentation, talking about your publication, uh, I have published everything I've done for the last, I mean, that I've personally done, I can do, uh, is the last 12, no, not 12, it's... Last nine years has been Creative Commons. Actually, actually, since 2004, it's actually 11 years. Everything. I don't use uh, copyrights anymore. Because uh, I think most of the things that we develop is actually a combination from what other people have done. And then you add your flavor and, and that's it. So you should... <laughs> why copyright it? Unless you want to make money. Uh, but I, I prefer sharing my stuff and then creating connections and creating revenue differently. Not necessarily the content itself. Okay. Okay. So let's look at Creative Commons. Okay. So, based on the video, uh, what is your understanding of Creative Commons? Just quickly before. Okay, there's questions here. Any paper that has been published in seminars under my name, can that be put on Creative Commons now? It depends. You have to ask. This is the problem publishing in journals and publishing conferences. They might write in small writing that they own the content. The moment you publish in a journal and, and you publish in, in, a, in a conference pay, uh, or a seminar, they might take ownership of your content. So you, you can't necessarily do that. You have to ask them permission, actually. That's one of the things I don't like to publish in journals. They take ownership. Many journals take ownership of your content. You yourself have to ask permission whether you can use the content that you developed, that you actually gave for free to a journal, but only because they might enable you to get its citations and, and exposure and so on. Okay. Okay, Prof. Karim has shared a very good link in the chat box about uh, copyright. It's very extensive. <laughs> but if you have time, it's, it's a wonderful resource. Okay, okay. so let's look at Creative Commons. Now, if you notice here, Creative Commons is not one license. It's actually six different versions, uh, different types to satisfy your needs in sharing. Okay, But don't get confused by these six licenses called Creative Commons. Eh? Creative Commons has six uh, types of... Uh, there are six types of Creative Commons license. Okay. We're going to, uh, okay, so if you look here, the two questions, see, two questions that you understand, which is very important, two questions only, okay. Okay, let me just, sorry, sorry, I want to do this, I want to change the color, what's the problem? I have problem changing the color, okay, okay. So this, this is the most important area, let me just show you, I want to write with a pen, okay, it's not working, okay. Two questions you need to know. Uh, and all those six licenses based on those two questions. Okay, The first one is, can somebody use it commercially or not? When you share it 
using source material, can the other person use it commercially? That means they make money from it. You might not make any money, but they make money from it. Can they do that? You have to say yes or no. Okay. Uh, if you ask me, I always say no. You can use my content as much, but don't use it for commercial purposes because that defeats the purpose for me sharing. I don't want to share so you can make money and then close it in an environment that only people have to pay for it. So usually, people that use Creative Commons, they, they don't make it open for commercial use unless it's for uh, critical purposes. Second question is, obviously, I'm sharing. Can someone create a new version? Can somebody edit my content and publish it with a, a variation, adapt it or, or, or change, tweak it a bit? It could be a graphic, it could be a text. Can they do that? Based on these two questions, the rest of the licenses is based on. Okay, so you understand now. So it's only two questions you need to know. Can I use it commercially? Can I edit it? Or can I manipulate the, the content? Or can I uh, improvise it? Okay. But based on that, there are actually six types of licenses because not everyone to share everything, but there are different types. So let's look at the, the highest level, which is buy. Okay, buy means attribution. That means you are allowed to use it anyway, even commercially. But you must, you must give attribution. Now, if you saw the example from China, uh, they want to give a presentation in, in, in actually for schools, and he, actually he was looking for projects, and, he, and they were, they're actually the biggest thing in that uh, event was that 21st century DNA. So we were very excited. About it. He could have just said, stated that this uh, presentation uh, is, is done by Zed al Sagov, but I'm sharing it because I think it's really good and I want it to be part of my presentation. He could have done that, but instead of that, he used his name and he wiped out my name. So he failed, which is the most important, which is by, which is attribution. Okay? So attribution is the first one. Now the second level, this is the, the they call it the freest. You can use it any way you want as long as attribution. So in other words, all licenses must have attribution, which is important. I mean, if you're sharing, at least you get some credit recognition. A lot of people are not looking for necessarily money, but at least give some recognition that, you know, I put in maybe day, or hours, or maybe months doing it, and you're just going to take the content and put your name and, and not give me any recognition. Okay. So Prof. Karim is copy-pasting here, I think, the what it is. Uh, okay. Now the second level is uh, uh, is buy and sharing alike. In other words, can someone use it commercially? Yes, but you must use within the same license. This sharing alike uh, it means that you have to use the same license, exactly the same license as given. I don't want to confuse you with this sharing alike. Okay, I've stopped using it now because it, it just it just confuses people and it gets really messed up. But the sharing alike, uh, so don't worry about the sharing alike. Now here, this is the next one. You have to give attribution. So I can use it commercially, but I cannot change it. That means I can. I give an example. I have a picture of Mona Lisa, or you know, a picture. Or maybe say, let I say somebody took a picture of a famous cricket. Because now we're mostly from India, right? Uh, who's your fa Who's your favorite cricket player? Anyone? What's your favorite? Okay, Sachin. Uh, I not Sachin. 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 Tendulkar. I think Tendulkar. I'm familiar with Tendulkar. So say that I'm a photographer. I take a picture of him, right? So I say to you, you know what? You can take my picture, but you're not allowed to manipulate it. I could put a donkey head or a chicken head on top. So you can take my picture, but you cannot manipulate it. So in other words, he's sharing his picture, but you cannot manipulate So a lot of times when you have uh, no derivations, uh, which means you're not allowed to edit it or change it, it's very often with visuals. Uh, not I haven't seen so much with text, but it does happen. But it's very often with graphic designers and designers. I'm willing to share my stuff, but you cannot manipulate it. Okay, so that is no derivatives. Uh, derivatives. Okay, this one here again. Huh? So now you know this one attribution. This one is, it will confuse you, but sharing alike means that you have to share with using the same license. Okay, so these two. Now the next level is you have to give attribution, but you're not allowed to use it commercially. You see that dollar sign, but a slash over it. That means yeah. Can I use it commercially? No. Can I edit it? Yes. Okay, it says yep. And the work must be non-commercial. You can edit it and share it, but it must be used for non-commercial purposes. Okay. And then you have a, uh, the next level, next type of Creative Commons license is attribution, non-commercial, sharing alike. Okay. This is the one I used to use before, but I've started using this one now. Because this sharing alike is so confusing. Yeah, which is it's interesting. Sharing alike is very easy to understand. Sharing alike. That means that if I share with this license, whatever you create using my content must use exactly this license. Okay. But it can drive people a bit crazy. <laughs> gets a bit messed up. Okay. And then we have uh, 
this one. Okay, so this one is I, I used to use non-commercial attribution. Now this is non-commercial attribution and sharing alike. Okay, you can see here. You cannot use it commercially. You can share it as much as you like, but it must be used for non-commercial purpose, and you can edit it. Okay, and this is the least free one. Attribution, of course, is in all. You can see attribution in all. Non-commercial. You cannot use commercial, and you cannot change it. Okay, that means. That's one of the things, uh, as an academic, if you're an academic and you're sharing your research, uh, especially, you want to also allow them to manipulate, but uh, even if you're sharing your teaching, yeah, you can, sh you can take it, you can manipulate it, make it better, but you cannot use it commercially. Uh, and that's what my personal uh, take is, that, that's my appreciation. That, uh, in terms of creative common license, that's what I like to do. But some people are so generous, you know, which is the highest level again, this attribution, Oh, this is actually the worst, uh, not worst, this is the highest size public domain, but I'm not covering public domain, means you can take my content and you don't even need to give attribution. That's the highest public domain. A lot of people do that, some people, no, no, some people just share their content and you can use it any way you want. You don't even need to mention my name, that is public domain, okay? Uh, some people do like that also, if, if it's con especially if it's controversial content. <laughs> they don't want to know, this, but I didn't do this. <laughs> okay, so... I, it's still, I, I'm sure it's still confusing, but just remember, Creative Commons is not complicated, okay? The reason I say it's not complicated is, okay? The reason I say it's not complicated is because you can use this tool here, okay? The CC selection tool. But I share the link here in the chat box, okay? It just ask the moment you ask it the questions, it creates the uh, license that you want, with, including the image, Okay? So again, you just answer the question. Allow for commercial use. If you say yes, it will create a different license. If you say no, it will create a different license. And then the second question, allow modifications of your work. Yes. Yes, as long as it's share alike or no. Okay. And once you've selected those two buttons, or two, two uh, radio buttons, it will generate the license for you. And there are some advanced features, but we're not going to go into that. That's basically, and then you get your license. You don't have to worry which one should I take. Six. By answering those two questions in the license, you will uh, get your license uh, that you want. And you can see my presentation down here. You see there? <laughs> which license am I using? Okay, can somebody describe what does that mean? Okay, this one here, see that? What does it mean? <laughs> somebody copy pasting here. <laughs> <laughs> non-commercial, okay. So you get it, huh? I wish I had an exam. I should give you guys an exam off to see whether my teaching is effective or not. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. So you can use it as much as you want, but don't use it for commercial purposes. Even this webinar here, which I'm going to share, I'm going to make it all for public. You can use it, but I don't want to see it locked in a commercial database and, and people assume that it's commercial, but it's not. It's actually allowed for anyone to use Okay. Okay. So we spend a lot of time because this is very important to know. Because when you start sharing, you can use. And the beauty of this license is, the moment you publish using any social media, that license ownership for you. So if somebody actually would plagiarize your content, you can take them to court with these licenses. Okay. So that's one of the things. I for me is when I do something, I will publish it immediately. And for me, that's that. That's kind of taking ownership of your idea. Uh, some people want to wait six months to publish in a journal, but you'd be surprised by that six months, somebody else might have published it in another journal. <laughs> and you come too late. <laughs> so actually, in terms of ideas, uh, sometimes it's better to use social media because you can get your ideas fast out and you can take ownership of it. Okay. okay. So uh, Ashta asked, how can you allow modification with share alike? Okay. Okay, let's go back. That's a good question. See, there is a license here. This one. No, no, sorry. This one. This one says share alike, non-commercial buy. In other words here, yep, and must use the same license of work, but you can create new versions of it. Okay? So share alike allows you to modify, but when you publish your content, you must use this license here. The same license that I have used. Which is a bit... It, it gets a bit confusing. So, uh, for some people... For me, it's clear, but uh, when people say that... I use your content using this license. I want to use this license, which is very similar, right? But apparently, I'm, that one maybe Prof. Karim can <laughs> We can get messy, okay? See, using the same license. See, Prof. Karim is, is uh, you can see the chat box. He's actually stating it out loud, copy paste. Share like allows modification or derivate work, but share again using the same license, okay? Okay. So, is my voice clear again? I'm getting a comment from. Uh, 
is my voice clear or is it get breaking up? Yes, okay. So whoever has got problem with the voice, please check your internet or check your... Uh, uh, okay. Because some people might have problems. But don't worry, this webinar recording will be made available afterwards uh, by Monday. I will share the link with uh, Professor Vasuta Kamat, uh, which I have to thank very much for inviting me to give this session. So you can share the link and you can watch the recording. Yes, the recording will be made available. Uh, but I might have to post edit. No, I'm just joking. I, I, I don't waste my time post editing. So if, I, if, if you do some mistakes here, we do it together. Okay? We can always be corrected online after that. Okay. So this is the license tool. Remember this one? We already saw this one. There's another tool, okay, you can use is this one here. You see that? You can install on, if, if you're using, or not everyone is using Microsoft Office, okay? But if you're using Microsoft Office, you can install in a plugin and your document, because a lot of you use maybe Microsoft Word, and you can do that, okay? So I'm going to put it in the chat box again, the link. It's on my slides here, you can see on my, let's say the next one. Oh, sorry. Let's go back, okay? It's on my slides here, you can see that? Is it an add on? Yes, it's an add on. You have to install it, okay? Uh, it's okay. Uh, so you can put it straight in the document. So when you publish online, uh, I'll show you tools later. You can, you have it already embedded in your your document. Uh, okay. The interesting part about this plugin, I was teaching someone else how to use the choose the license, and this person discovered it by searching this one, and she shared me. That's why I say the power of sharing is when you share something with someone else. The other person is, is going to try it out maybe and then find something new. And the person, of course, wants to sh usually wants to share it back with you. It's creating that learning ecosystem and sharing system, which is very powerful. That's one of the things I like to share because every time I share, someone else, maybe not the same person, will connect and share with me uh, and, and we will learn something now. Okay? So this is Creative Commons. We looked at that. Now we're going to look at the research cycle from the beginning to the end where we can use social media. And, and you'll discover, I hope, for the next half an hour, one hour, I don't know how long I'm going to go on. Uh, uh, although I'm fasting, I, I can go on. Uh, but I think we have to limit it to about one, one half hour. Is Where in the research cycle can we use social media? And we're going to look at the... Uh, of course, there are many definitions of how you define a research cycle. But let's look at it from this perspective. You have the first dis discovery. I'm, I'm discovering new ideas and so on, or concepts. Uh, I want to come up with my research paper and so on. And then how do we use social media for research? Okay, and then how do we use social media to get our our ideas and concepts and maybe papers to be peer reviewed? Okay, not just a journal uh, peer review with one or two people reviewing. I mean, to me, if only one or two people review my content, I feel kind of sad. <laughs> you know, when you write something, you want more than two people to review your content. So this is where social media can be very powerful. Okay, and how where can you publish besides using conventional journals? Where can you actually publish your content to get feedback and 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 also create awareness about your idea and concept and so on? Okay. So we're going to look first at the discovery stage. Okay. Again, when I'm sharing tools now and ideas, these tools can be used for all stages, but they're very powerful for the different phases within the uh, phases when I'm talking about different or various tools. Okay. Okay. But before we start that, say that you have written a research paper. It has been published in a journal already. Okay, you publish your paper in a journal. Now, how would you promote it using social media? Okay, can we have in the chat? How would you say that you've done a pub, you, you, you've done a research paper, but you want it, it nobody's reading it in the journal, uh, and you want it to get exposure? How would you use social media to get to get exposure? How would you go about it? Let's see in the chat box. We got some good ideas <laughs> by posting the abstract, uploading it to Facebook. See, see, they already have a blog about it. I want you a blog about it. Research gate. See, whatever we're going to cover in this presentation, people already know about it. Create a blog, upload it on blogs. <laughs> so everybody's yeah, it's through blog. Okay, now share the link of the article. Okay, where where share the link? <laughs> okay, blogs. Okay, <laughs> journals. Okay, journals are already. In, already closed systems upload on Google Scholar okay blog I'm not so much aware. okay a lot of blog blog that's the first thing I talked about today but uh, there's much more than blogs okay okay 
Now, this is conventional. When you want to discover something, uh, these are very conventional tools that uh, are often used. So you, how many of you are using actually RefWorks or Mendeley or, or Zotera? These are very common tools used by academics to, to collate and, and uh, your literature review and, and also discover. Mendeley. So a lot of people here are using Mendeley. Yeah? And IMU, where I work, uh, we're actually using, uh, we use, I mean, lectures are using old tools, but we promote in the library RefWorks. But somehow, some people seem to like Mendeley more. I don't use any of them, but anyway. Zohera. So what is using Zohera? Okay. This deserves an own... Uh, webinar on <laughs> how to make sense of these tools, but you can see we are already using some of these tools. Okay, uh, our China is not using any of these tools. Okay, uh, these tools are very powerful in the sense that you can discover gold mines of other collections by other people, and if they share it, you can discover them. So a lot of things you can use these tools, and of course, collate your uh, uh, research papers and then easily convert them into APA style or what style for when you want to do the references and so on. Okay, and some people do also OneNote, Evernote, EndNote. These are common tools. Because I've given this presentation a few times, and uh, this presentation I'm giving to you today is I've given a few times, and these are the tools that people are telling me these are the tools that I use. Okay, so these are very conventional tools. There's nothing wrong with them, but they are very much also closed systems. Let's go beyond them and look at what about social media tools. Okay. I call it using social intelligent curation tools, tools to enable it to filter and collect and share and so on. So we have some here. Okay, let's do a quick uh, chat. Uh, let's see how fast you're typing. Pinterest. How many of you are using Pinterest uh, to, to, to collect resources and share them? So we have some already using here. Yes, yes, no, no, yes, okay. I, I will do the poll, but it just takes too long time for now. Okay, no, 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 no. Okay, Digo is out. Delish out. What about... The latest one that, that's very popular, not popular, but it's I, I also discovered recently with uh, Prof. Karim, uh, shared with me, is, is called Google Collections. Have you heard about Google Google Plus and Google Collections? Okay. I, I, I recommend you just Google, you can just Google Google Collections and you'll get another tool, <laughs> which is, is something like Pinterest. Because I think Pinterest now has lost it for me. For it, it, yeah, sometimes you have to log in to see the, I don't know, you know. So try Google Collection is another one. Uh, Scoopit is very popular. Uh, I like Scoopit, it's okay, but these they're good in no sense, but sometimes take a bit of time to load. Uh, Storyfy, uh, Storyfy, a lot of people use Storyfy. I'm not a lot of people actually, Prof. Karim. <laughs> uh, is, I don't know how many people actually use Storyfy for research, but people are Storyfy to collect resources. But Prof. Karim has some good, maybe Prof. Karim, you can share a link to your Storyfy so you can see an example. Okay. And then we have Facebook. How many of you are actually using Facebook to discover new ideas and to, to join research groups and, and so on? Okay. I think that's still very common. Facebook is actually very powerful to discover new ideas. And my favorite tool is Twitter. To discover new ideas, to connect with world-renowned people is Twitter. Okay. So we'll look at all these tools in the upcoming uh, uh, minutes. <laughs> okay. But it, these tools are very powerful to pull, to discover, to filter, to organize and share. And also create conversations uh, around them. Okay. He, he, they said uh, Pinterest has amazing ideas though. Yes. Pinterest is very powerful and says it visualizes your links in a very nice way. Uh, so it's like you're reading a magazine. You have things like Flipboard and Feedly and so on. But today's presentation is just too much to go into. So I'll look at some of these tools to discover. Okay. So the first one we're going to look at is Twitter. Okay, Twitter today has more than 300 million active users around the world. Okay. How many of you, let's ask this question. I need to know before I start this. Sorry, this I don't want this one. I want to ask a poll now. I want to know actually how many of you on Twitter. And we're going to find that out now. We're going to do a little uh, question here. Uh, okay, publish. Okay, I'm going to ask you how many of you use Twitter for research? It's in higher level, not just uh, you're doing it uh, for fun, you're actually using it for research purposes. I'll share the results so you can see the results. You have to mouse over the bars to see it. Okay. Okay, you can see here now, I've shared results, 58% uh, do not use Twitter. I'm not sure whether it's for research, they, they might be on Twitter, but they're not using it for research, 58%. Uh, and only 7%, okay, this actually, these numbers are wrong, because not everybody's participating in the poll. Uh, but 
now 66%. So you can see the majority in this uh, webinar are not using Twitter for research. And as uh, being myself, uh, can we put a chat? Why are you not using Twitter for research? Is it information overload? overload? <laughs> can we have in the chat? Well, why are you not using Twitter? Word limit, okay, the reasons, get overwhelmed, <laughs> no uh, misguidance, didn't know, okay, too short message, <laughs> okay, did not know, didn't know, okay. <laughs> okay, there's no right and wrong here, okay, you can see now gone up to 73% are not using Twitter, 76% <laughs> are not using Twitter, uh, okay, we can see from this poll that 57 participants out of 68 are participating, that means 11 participants in this <laughs> webinar is either not here, <laughs> it's just switched on the webinar or uh, mentally I don't know how to do the poll uh, but it's good I think the participation is great we have actually now we have uh, 50, 59 uh, participating in the poll that means it's, it's, which is very good okay okay uh, okay I'm going to end the poll uh, view the poll okay end poll so that's it we've got some numbers now I know so this is good so that means none of you are, um, not none of you most of you are not exposed to Twitter so I hope uh, this can benefit the information I'm going to share with you now huh? I hope it's just not information, it's actually some wisdom. Okay. Twitter is very bad for some purposes. There's no doubt Twitter has the bad side effects. But it's not really Twitter, it's people using Twitter. Okay, this is an example. This is a research paper, it's quite old, but it gives an example. Uh, see, what happens when you tweet on open access paper? This, this is an example of somebody published in an open access journal. Of course, not anybody. If somebody famous would tweet about it, uh, uh, some, this is an example. Then it will get exposure. You can see it gets exposure. Because when somebody finds Twitter, that means people are following his Twitter tweets and they'll click on the link and you get views. Okay. So Twitter, in other words, can create awareness about your paper. If if you are known or somebody known uh, tweets about it or you use a, a Twitter hashtag. Okay. It's a bit complicated, but you use a Twitter hashtag and somebody gets exposure. You can get exposure to your uh, article through Twitter. Now, if somebody famous in your area and tweets about it or discusses your paper, you will get a lot of views. Okay, And whether they will cite it, of course, that depends on how good your paper is or whether they find interest to cite you. But the thing is, we know for sure that if, if somebody in the area, expert area, or even you tweet about it, it's more likely to get more views. Okay, And you can get sometimes very spike. You can see a lot of views here. You can see a lot of views because somebody famous uh, tweeted about it. Now, but the question is whether it results in citations because views is not evaluated. What is evaluated is how many citations your paper got. Uh, and that also, as I said, it, if your paper is no good, you're most likely not going to get citations. But a lot of times, not a lot, sometimes your paper is really good, but nobody reads it. But if somebody were to read it, they would cite it. And that's where social media can play that role to actually get, get, get it exposure. And then, you know, people will cite it. A lot of times people publish good stuff, but it's just locked in one journal and, and, and doesn't get exposure. So in other words, this is an example of how Twitter could play a role in giving you exposure. So how to use? They're asking, I need to learn how to use Twitter, okay? Twitter is an easy way to connect and interact with uh, world-renowned people. In most fields, you'd be surprised, because I'm, I'm most in tech and e-learning and so on. Uh, I think it's nearly 99%. Nearly, nearly 100% of all e-learning professionals are on Twitter. So it, for, for, for me, it's very powerful. But I'm not sure in your field. You have to check in your field. But you'd be surprised how many experts are on Twitter to share their latest research or their latest readings or their latest ideas and explore and so on. Okay? Uh, one of the things that people bug is you can only write 140 characters. Okay, <laughs> you have to be very short. You have to short messages. Okay, uh, so I will share with you quickly now. Is say that you want to write a long message. Okay, this is a challenge for you. I want to write a long message, but I'm using Twitter. How would I go about it? Okay, I want to write a long message. Say I want to write 500 characters or 500 words. How would I use Twitter to do that? Let's see how creative you are. Okay, mind map, okay? Very nice. Manasi said mind map. Why not use a mind map? Concept maps. So you actually, you create a concept map and you create a graphic or a, you, a JPEG or a PNG and you publish it to uh, Twitter, okay? Concept maps, okay? Everybody. Take a picture screenshot of the text upload. Yes, see? <laughs> That's how you can also uh, 
infringe copyright, you take a, our commercial uh, paper, <laughs> you take a screenshot of it and you put it on Twitter. Okay, diagram form. Okay, post it on your blog and tweet the link. Uh, that's why. In other words, you you use the blog to post your reflections, and then you take the link to your blog and you post it. It's already mentioned. The, the, uh, somebody mentioned already in the thread box. Is exactly, you could just write it in your blog and then share the link of your blog post and the title of it in using Twitter. Okay, so don't be f uh, not fooled, but don't be limited by oh, only 140 characters. You can write as long as you want, but the whole reflection or writing will not appear necessarily in Twitter, but it will appear either as a picture or maybe in a blog post or maybe in a slideshow presentation and so on. Twitter is more of a tool to connect and uh, and share and and so on. Okay. So Prof. Karim shares a very good link here again. How to use Twitter for academic research. Okay, I used to have it in my slideshow, but I, I took it out. I'm not sure it's very updated. Okay. So, next, okay. So, say that you don't like to tweet or send messages. I just want to use Twitter. How would you use Twitter? Okay. My recommendation is don't think about if I use Twitter, I have to tweet or send a message. No, you don't have to do that. Okay. Uh, a good way to start is you create a Twitter account. You look for uh, amazing people in your field and, and follow them. And just spend one week, look at what they post. Huh? Just look at what they post and you'll be surprised and amazed at the things that you discover. And the second thing you can do is also, uh, learning the maze of trends, is hashtags. We'll get to, you see in Twitter, although you have no followers or you're following, you can use hashtags. We'll get back to the next slide. Now the second stage is, okay, I'm following. I've got to interest in Twitter. Now how do, what do I do next? Okay, use it to share your ideas. Okay. Now the problem is if you have no followers, nobody's reading your ideas, and that's where the hashtag comes in. In the next slide, I'll talk about the hash. How you can share your ideas. You have no followers, you can share this, but people still discover your tweets. Okay. So this is follow. I recommend start just following great people or interesting people, and you'll be just for the first week you'll discover a lot. Or you can even search Twitter as a search. You search for the things you like, and you see tweets flowing about what you like in any field. Because you'd be surprised what 300 million people around the world are messaging about. Okay. And then the third level to me on Twitter is you start engaging. Now I'm tweeting, I'm following great people, I'm interacting with them, and this is when the engagement starts. You start asking questions. And I've done this so many times, I've sometimes I don't know the answer. I just pop the question to Twitter. And somebody, somebody in Venezuela or South America just gives me an answer. Whether it's right or wrong, that's not the issue. They post, hey, I think I, I, you should do like this. I said, whoa. You know, that's when you discover, wow, Twitter is quite powerful. Like, you can just post a question in Blue Moon using maybe a hashtag, which I'll get back to. And voila, uh, somebody somewhere in the world is going to try to answer your question or try to give a comment. <laughs> okay. And then... The fourth level is you can use it to build communities and, and use it for your courses if you're teaching uh, and groups. Because see, when you use Twitter, if you have a hashtag or Twitter in Twitter, the power is that, yes, only your students might see your tweets. But if your tweets are using a, a hashtag that's generic, all the people from around the world can suddenly join the conversation. Although it's very messy, but you can join the conversation. Okay, How to confirm whether the comment is correct or not. I think uh, confirm, uh, I'm not sure about how to confirm because you have to evaluate it. That's where you have to use your critical thinking uh, and, and do some double testing and checking. Not everything people say on social media is correct and sometimes very often they're wrong. So you, you have to use your common sense and, and more than, you should just do a bit of your own research if somebody says a comment. Uh, okay. So this is the most important thing. Now, the most powerful thing to me in Twitter is if you understand this, okay? That's why I'm emphasizing this. I had a whole slide on this, not on the two. hashtag. Okay, how many of you know what a hashtag is? <laughs> okay. It's the most important thing in Twitter, uh, if you ask me, for research. Okay. Okay. Uh, you see this? Okay, you see this med ed? Ed chat, edutech. These are I just give an example of hashtags here. Distant, uh, dist ed, dis distance education, innovate chat. Huh? See, say that I have no followers. I have no followers at all. I want to ask a question, right? The only thing I need to do now is say that I want to do on medical education. I want to ask, how do do we do do surgery on people with uh, autism? No, yeah, that's bit, something very question that you have no answer. 
I could use this hashtag. So in my tweet, the message I write out, I write meded hash. It could be anywhere in your message and say, how do I do this? Everybody following this hashtag, there might be thousands of people following this hashtag, will see your message. Because it's zoomed in for this hashtag. And that's why it's very important to understand hashtags are, is the essence of power of Twitter. When you start using hashtags, you can reach people, you can have conversations beyond who is following you or who you are following. It just goes beyond. And that's the hashtag is the essence. It's like you have an ocean of 300 tweets, 300 million tweets, there are 300 million messages, information, all that. I, I use a hashtag and it just zooms in. From the 300 million tweets, it zooms into the maybe 100 tweets about that thing. Okay. Okay, so anybody who tweets, okay, let's read, anybody who tweets, uh, this is not, I have a Twitter presentation by the way, because we can't cover it, but anybody that tweets a hashtag, anybody uh, looking for this hashtag or following this hashtag will see your message. The only thing you need to do when you write a message, you need to include the hashtag of interest. Okay. So even if you have zero followers, zero followers, and you tweet this, somebody, I'm not saying somebody will, but somebody will see your tweet, but whether they answer to it, that's not an issue. But you'd be very surprised that maybe you have no followers or one or two followers, but somebody famous out there thought your question was really outstanding, and you said, I'm going to answer that question. And you get actually an answer. And that's very exciting. So do we need to make hashtag with our names or with our research? Okay, the first thing is, you can create your own hashtag, but not many people follow. I recommend you look for hashtags in your field. Okay, uh, there is a website I didn't put it here. Let me just there's a hashtag website. Let me just show you. There are quite a few actually. Uh, hash. Uh, uh, I, I, there's actually a whole list. You can actually like write mid. Uh, this is uh, wait. Uh, let me just find it. So, uh, no, no, this is that. Just give me one second. Let me just. Okay. My computer is going a bit slow now, so I hope it's not going to crash. Okay, hashtag collection. Okay. Okay. Okay, my computer is a bit slow now, uh, but this, this, hopefully somebody has shared in the chat box, but I can share with you later. There's, uh, uh, for example, medicine, we, we already have, okay, hashtag research can be, okay. Uh, hashtags, uh, there's actually a, like for medicine, there's also already a, a collection of hashtags which even give you statistics on how many people are answering in this hashtag and so on. So there's a lot of these uh, collections of hashtags that you can find. Uh, I just put here, because we're talking about education, so these are the hashtags that I identify are very generic but can be very useful. And the thing is not just to share, is to follow these hashtags and see the kind of messages you get there. It could be sharing of an article that you, oh, wow, I didn't read the article. It could be sharing an idea, it can be sharing a video. It can be sharing an infographic. You'll be surprised uh, what the things that people are tweeting uh, using different hashtags. Okay, but even if you didn't get it now, it's not, don't worry about it. Being confused is okay. is is part of learning. Just remember that when you want to do Twitter, uh, do some research on Twitter hashtags and and so on, and you'll be discovered. The power of Twitter hashtag is very powerful for your own learning and for your own sharing, and also to create this conversation, even to share your article. Say that I've done a, I've written an article on uh, medical education. I use this hashtag here in so I tweet the I use this hashtag in my tweet I write it out and then I write uh, I, I share the URL to my article and then I write a statement this article explores how to do surgery on patients that have broken the collarbone and you'll be surprised people will discover the article and some people might view it some people might even cite it okay so that's enough about Twitter. Too much about Twitter. Actually, Twitter can go on for one or two hours, but this is the essence. If you are, uh, and the rest you can uh, hopefully learn uh, on your own. Okay, so that's Twitter. Okay, I'm not going to spend much time on Google Scholar, but of course, Google Scholar is a very powerful tool to expose you. I'm not sure whether everyone can create a Google Scholar uh, page, but this is also very fine to find out how powerful it present. This is Prof. Ma, this person here. He's the, the most famous academic in my university. He has the most citations. You can see that he has 2,000 citations and so on. You can see the trend of every year is just increasing. This year is only halfway, so it'll probably be as much as last year. So this is an example. You can see here, you can see the article. You can see cited by 169. You can click on it and you can see the papers that are, have cited it. Okay, so this is Google Scholar, but I, I suspect most of you, especially if you're doing a piece, you should know about Google Scholar. Okay, but it is, it is one of those tools too. 
discover new stuff and create awareness and also connect with famous researchers and so on. Okay. Okay, so that's discover period. Now, how do we do research in terms of collaboration and interacting and so on? So let's look at some of the things that we can do to increase our ability to do more effective and, and up-to-date research. Okay. okay, before we go, Uttar asks, do we get feedback on our articles? Whether we get feedback or not depends on a lot of issues. What I can tell you, social media will create, can help you create that awareness. Now, whether you get feedback or not, it, it depends. Uh, if, you want, if you want to really be strategic getting feedback, one of the smartest ways to do it is when you tweet, you tweet directly to an expert and say, what do you think of these ideas? I wrote about this in my article, what do you think? And so, but the thing is, you can be so direct and you'll be surprised many of them might reply, if, especially if you tweet directly to them using their, their name. Uh, but the only thing, you have to be receptive. You have to be receptive to criticism and you have to be receptive that somebody might uh, basically criticize your paper very, the, the, very critically uh, in the public sphere, okay. So if you if you're if you're if you're a very sensitive person, uh, you have to take uh, a second note. But if you're not a sensitive person, you like to challenge yourself, shoot your your papers out there, and might might get slammed. They might not get slammed. Then it's unbelievable how much feedback you can get on your articles. Okay. So how do you use social, uh, social media for collaborative research? Okay. Okay. Facebook. Okay. I'm not going to ask how many of you use Facebook. I, I suspect maybe 99% or maybe 100% using Facebook. How many are part of a Facebook group in your research area? Okay. Okay. Actually, all of you should do that. If you use on Facebook, you can just go to the search. Search your uh, subject area. You'll find a group or something in, in Facebook. To Okay. And the key is to find the good ones. And when you're part of these groups, this is the place where you should share your article. If you're in this group, you put your article and you share it to the group. Uh, and that's a good way. Because those people you're already connected with. And they can give you feedback and so on. Okay. I'm sharing with you a link. This is uh, a group that we have. Uh, uh, several participants in this webinar are actually part of this group. It's called the Learning Innovation Circle. Okay. Uh, Prof. Karim shared it just after me. Uh, he, I, I think you should have to be my assistant, Prof. Karim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so this is an example. Of, this we call this our uh, learning innovation circle. Uh, we have a group about in Mala mostly Malaysians, but now from overseas also. It's a very powerful group, uh, uh, very influential people in Malaysia at least that share and 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 share ideas and research and and not only re what, what things they're doing to be more creative in their teaching and learning. Uh, it's not so much a research group, it's more of an application, action-based uh, teaching and learning group that really explores the, how to be very creative and innovative in the teaching and learning. So it's a good group to join. You're more than welcome to join us. Okay. Okay, so Facebook. You can see now, I, I checked this, the re re latest data. There are actually 1.44 billion active users, not users, active users on Facebook. And, that, and if you have 7 billion as a total population, we're talking about, yeah, one-fourth, huh? one-fifth, it's actually one-fifth, actually one-fourth, between one-fourth and one-fifth of our population, world population are on Facebook. Okay. So when you talk about Facebook, the two things you can do uh, to promote your research or connect with people you know, is you can create a Facebook page or a Facebook group. Uh, so while we're here, how many of you actually created a Facebook page or a Facebook group? Can you just put in, how many of you actually created a, uh, created a Facebook page or a group? For our department. See, somebody has created for the department. Both. Uh, okay. Page. Neither. No. Group. <laughs> School. Alumni. Okay, you can see a lot of things here, right? Neither. Now, my question to you is, I want to create a research group. Okay, I want to create a research group. But we, we get together and we discuss issues and we do not want to have advertisers come in, people that just want to spoil our group. So which one should I use? Page or groups? Okay, it's very important to know because you can do a page. I, today, I don't have time today to show you how to do it, but you can do pages or groups. Okay. Pages, there are a lot of similarities there, so people get confused, okay? But my recommendation to simplify the thing is, if you want to do research, 
a, 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 create a research group and you do not want everybody to be involved there and especially because the problem is when your group grows especially if it's a pager advertisers will come in and post stuff and just spoils your whole conversation uh, so that's very important if you want to do that it's good to create a group which is uh, a closed group okay keep that in mind a closed group okay but if you want to have it public open to everyone free flow uh, pages you can do that in groups also but pages are, are better because pages provides you a lot more statistics they have analytics and so on. I, did, I I have that in my previous presentation but I took it out this it's a, it's a few more things that you can do with pages okay but if you want to do a research group focus you don't want everybody to join you don't want people that just come to spoiler uh, use groups and and make it closed and then you can just share the link just you know, just now I, me and prof Karim, we share the link on on our group uh, and then people can join and we accept them as they join so at least we can uh, we know that the people joining uh, we, we have a bit control on that okay okay so again here's the example so what is the good about and the good thing about groups is they don't need to be your friends they can be in the same group but they're not your friends okay uh, and one thing good about Facebook and most social media it's already mobilized I mean you can use it on any device so if you want to do that's a powerful men like Twitter and Facebook they work very well on any device uh, and you, that's not always the case when on people's LMS and, and so on. And okay, we don't have to spend so much time on this. Okay, this is Google Plus or Google. Okay, how many of you use Google for research? <laughs> and so how many use Google for research? Here? Yes. Okay, that's great. So we have a lot of participants are using Google, 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 and Google. Okay. So what do you use in Google for research? I'm talking about collaborative research, not just research collaborative I mean that you're connecting with people and you're discussing ideas or discussing your research what kind of tools in Google are you using for that beyond Google Scholar I mean tools that you actually use to connect with people and discuss and so on Google Docs okay some people Simon is using Google Docs very powerful tool what else it's open discussion not for Dropbox okay that's not Google mm. I don't know if Wu has bought Dropbox, but, <laughs> but you can use Dropbox, yeah, of course. Uh, Science Direct, okay. Google Drive, okay. Google Docs, Google Drive. Wiley, Wiley is Google, uh, okay. Google Docs, up here. Okay. Google Plus, okay. So let's look at the next slide while people are chatting. So these are some of the tools, right? Okay. So as I mentioned, uh, Google Collection is a good tool to curate or filter and organize and share your discoveries and literature review and so on. But if you want to have a live discussion, say that you want to have a live discussion with 10, up to 10 researchers, researchers out in the, around the world. Which tool should I use of this? I want, to, I want to link up with 10 researchers around the world and I want to discuss this latest idea that I think will revolutionize education. Which tool should I use? Circle, okay, circles, circle, circle. That's not the tool I'm talking about. I'm I want to interact with them live, video streaming at the same time, chilling with them. <laughs> I'm giving away the answer. <laughs> Hangouts, okay, Skype is not Google. We're talking about Google now. Skype has no tool. Yeah. Hangouts, Google Hangouts, okay. So what's so special about Google Hangouts? Why use, why use Google Hangouts instead of Skype? Why is Google Hangouts... Pre Prof. Karim, please don't answer. Take a break. <laughs> I know you know the answers. <laughs> Others, what? <laughs> Why would I use Google Hangouts? What's so special about Google Hangouts? <laughs> Multiple videos, okay. A Skype can also do that. The commercial one can do that also. <laughs> How many people people at the same time can I do a Google Hangout with and they have their own videos live streaming of how many people at one time can video stream together no idea <laughs> 10 yes Rashida correct 10 you can actually have live 10 and people can watch it live streaming I mean thousands can watch it but actually 10 people can participate with video streaming together at one time using Google Hangouts 
Okay, and that's why Google Hangouts is is is, is very popular. Uh, and actually, even now we have this research group in Malaysia, uh, which has about thirty thousand members, a Facebook group, uh, and they use they have Google Hangout sessions. So they get a few experts to come together and discuss, and they are video streaming, and then people follow the video because you can do a uh, broadcast. You can do a Google Hangout broadcast. Uh, hundreds, if not thousands, people can watch it. But you have four or five having this live, maybe panel discussion uh, using it. You know. So I can I give an example. You can do it here also. I will show you the sample. Hey, Prof. Karim, are you uh, okay? Are you online now, Prof. Karim? I mean, are you your camera is working or not? Oh, his camera is shy today. So even this tool here can do up to six. But see, you can't do as good as Google Hangouts can do ten. Okay, this one can do six. Okay. Okay. Okay, next. Okay, that's Google. So, okay, so I just shared a few. Google Plus, Google Docs, Google Hangout. Google has a whole collection of tools that you can use for research. Now we come to the next one, which is LinkedIn. Okay. How many of you would use LinkedIn? Okay, now there are more than 360 million people on LinkedIn. And why would you use LinkedIn instead of Facebook? Okay, that's a good question. Why would I use LinkedIn instead of Facebook? Facebook, okay. <laughs> why use LinkedIn? LinkedIn has groups, by the way. They have groups also. More prof professional approach. Get to know more research professionally, okay. Professional, okay. Unnecessary, okay. More professional, more academic. <laughs> okay, more professional. Okay, okay. So here we, we get the idea. Okay. So these are the things that I recommend you should do. Uh, first of all, you need to create a. Uh, let me just sort out this. Okay. Hey. My. Uh, okay. Okay, first of all, LinkedIn has a search. When you search LinkedIn, you can search for all your interest areas and you'll discover things. You'll discover people and you will discover research groups or groups. Uh, like uh, Facebook, LinkedIn has groups. Now, as they may, in the chat box mentioned, it's more professional. In other words, even the conversations going on on LinkedIn are usually much more intensive and, and professional than in Facebook. Facebook is more fun, relaxed. You know? When you go into LinkedIn and you actually if you join some of these groups, it's very intellectually stimulating because they, people just really want to show the best side. They don't want to find, and sometimes it's a bit dry also, but they actually write very reflective posts. And the power of it is that you can link up with organizations, companies, especially if you're doing research, practical research, you want to create, say I'm, I'm creating medicine, I want to create some new formula of chemicals and so on. You can link up with companies through LinkedIn. You can link up with professionals in the field uh, that most likely going to be on LinkedIn and you can join the groups and, and, and discuss issues and you can really test your ideas in the real world through LinkedIn. So see LinkedIn as a, as a vehicle to test your ideas and your research in the real world uh, because LinkedIn, most professionals on today are on LinkedIn, to be honest, most professionals are on LinkedIn and, and more and more are using it as a vehicle to have these conversations, professional conversation about different aspects. So in other words, use the search to find what you want, find people, join groups and discover new research, do new research, share your research, even share your papers with professionals, not just share your papers with academics, share your papers with real professionals, okay, real professionals. I'm not saying academics aren't real professionals, don't get me wrong, but with LinkedIn you can actually link up with People are not academics at all, maybe, but they are very powerful in your area. They are doing they are doing stuff that has practical Im impact on people around the world, and and this is where LinkedIn is, is a very powerful tool. So I hope after this <laughs> session, if you don't have a LinkedIn account, do it. Look for groups in the area, and you'll be very surprised. I, I know from e-learning because when I look at e-learning, those groups they wow. The groups in, in LinkedIn, the kind of conversations they have is that you cannot find. Uh, if you, if you were to look into uh, other places, uh, especially if you go to, uh, what do you call it, uh, journals. Because journals usually don't have conversation in the first place. I mean, now they're starting to have conversations within articles. But uh, in LinkedIn, you will find those real conversations. Okay? Okay. So that's LinkedIn. Okay. We looked at LinkedIn. We looked at Facebook. We looked at Twitter. We looked at blogs. How many of you wiki, do wikis? Or collaborate on wikis. Or know what a wiki is. <laughs> I use, okay. 
Sometimes, yes, Wikipedia, everybody knows Wikipedia, okay. <laughs> How many use wikis for research? Okay, to, to write your research paper. <laughs> Let's do a, I want to do, I want to create a poll, okay. Use wikis for my research. I'm going to ask that question now, let me, let me I'm just constructing it now. Uh, yes. No, I'm going to publish this question. Please answer. How many of you are using it for your uh, research? Wikis for research. It could be Google, Google Docs. Is a re, uh, by the way, Google Docs is an example of wiki. Actually, Google Docs. So, if you're using Google Docs for your research, it means you're using a wiki. Okay. So, so wiki seems to be quite widely used here. Yeah? You can see it's more yes than no's, which is very interesting, which is good. So, I don't need to spend so much time on wikis. <laughs> Oh, you voted. Think you can change your vote? You cannot change your vote. <laughs> when I say use wikis for research, I mean you, you, you're actually creating wikis. You're actually creating documents or ideas or, or paid case studies. You're actually working together on a document or a, or a web page, uh, updating together. It's to using it. Eh? Okay. So you can see it's, uh, we still have more yes than no's. Okay. Uh, no is 26 people said no, 28 said yes. Okay, I thought Wikipedia. <laughs> Everybody uses Wikipedia. Although they don't, don't admit it, academics don't like Wikipedia, <laughs> but they use it. It's like the entry point to find out about something. About uh, You go to Google search, you find Wikipedia, <laughs> and you look through, and then you go into the other aspects. Okay, But I'm not saying Wikipedia. I'm saying you use wikis. Wikis is the ability to work together on a document uh, or, a, or even a, a, a presentation and, and collaborate on something. Allow more than one to work on a document. Okay. No, no. Okay. <laughs> so okay. If you don't know what a wiki is, we'll we'll know about it. Okay. So that's a wiki. So before I go further, when was the where does the word wiki come from? Where does the word wiki come from? <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to ask Prof. Karim. He's been... <laughs> okay. The word wiki actually comes from here. <laughs> okay. Wiki. They have wiki wiki shuttles in Honolulu International Airport. Okay. Honolulu is in, in Hawaii. Okay. Wiki wiki. Which means quick, quick. <laughs> it's a quick... Must take you quickly to somewhere. <laughs> so the guy who is... Uh, Prof. Karim, do you know who, who, without Googling, do you know who is the one that came out with using wiki for uh, the, what we understand as wiki? What's his name? Ah, okay, because it's not in my slides. You know. <laughs> it's Howard Cunningham, okay? Howard Cunningham, Howard Cunningham, uh, okay? Uh, he used it, he, he actually was at the airport, but... And he saw this wiki wiki, and the idea was actually first to use the word quick web. The idea that people, a lot of people can go to the same web page and update quickly, but they didn't work well. Then he came up with the uh, t uh, word wiki, which was actually inspired by this bus. Okay, in <laughs> so this bus you get credit, acknowledgement, attribution for wikis. He's not got any attribution. It's not fair, is it? <laughs> Uh, so this this poor little bus is famous. It's probably one of the most famous buses in the world, but nobody knows about it. <laughs> okay, so wiki we can use for research, for crowdsourcing, collaboration, blah, blah, blah. A website or a document developed collaboratively by a community of users allowing any user to add and edit the content. Uh, there are several definitions of wikis, but I found this one most easy. Uh, it could be a website, it could be a document, it could be a presentation, by the way. It doesn't have to be that. So, But the idea is that you're working as a community and allowing any user or sometimes now wikis will be in a closed group because you can actually like in Google Docs you choose who can update documents it's still a wiki but the idea is multi more than one person can update the documents or a web page Okay, so that's wikis. But I'm not going to spend too much time because you know what wikis are. These are some of the tools. Google Sites is very good to collaborate to build a site. You can use Blogger now. I think Blogger is more and more becoming like a wiki kind of tool. Google Docs is, of course, good. Uh, we can't cover that. Okay, yeah. And these are all the tools. I don't know if they're still alive. This might, I didn't have time to update my slides. So. <laughs> but if you ask me, I still prefer Google Docs. Do you know why I like Google Docs? Is that 
at one time. This is a question for anyone here. How many people can work at a document live at one time? I, I, I know I, maybe they've changed, but last time I read about it. How many people at one time can work on a document? At the same time, you can see them updating together. Google Docs. Five, okay? The answer is not five, by the way. Ten, oh, no idea. This you must know, this is like so important. <laughs> 50 people, five zero, okay? Five zero. 50 people can work at the same time updating a document. Can you imagine if you want to come up with brainstorming an idea or, or you can actually... 50 people can work at a document. Can you imagine if you're coming out with a business plan? You can actually work, 50 people can work on this. You just come out with an outline. They work on, you, can, you can produce a business plan in, in minutes or in, in an hour or two because 50 people are working at the same time on different uh, uh, items. Okay. So it's a very good tool for research also. Okay. 55 Okay. So I'm asking very difficult questions here. Okay. Blogging. <laughs> What can we do with blogging? Okay, blogs. Okay, that's that's my favorite tool. Uh, okay, again, this is just an, a case study. You can go to this case study. It's in my slides. Free economics. Okay, let me just. Uh, it's an old case because I haven't had time to update that part of the document. Huh? Okay, let me just. I just want to share the link in the chat box. I, uh, okay, I'll share with you later. It's just taking time. But you can see here. See that I, I just want to give an example. Uh, somebody writes about economics, right? They write about economics. They publish somewhere nobody reads. Okay. Now say that uh, this free economics blog, which is a famous, very famous blogger or blog, discovers this article and links it in their post. They write about something and they link it to their post. Suddenly there is a huge spike in people viewing it. So in other words, again, the blog has been used as tool to promote your article. And whether it results in citation, that depends, of course. If your article is not interesting after reading it, then people won't cite it. If it's interesting, they will cite it. But the, again, it's the awareness, okay? You can see the spike. So this is another example. Crit Batman blogs about a paper. You can see the spike here. Okay, so in other words, blogs it can be very powerful. But of course, if you blog and you have nobody reading your blog, it's going to be the same as your journal, <laughs> you know? So the key is, uh, if your blog is well uh, read, then it, it, it can create uh, awareness about your paper. But uh, the best way actually to get it really read is to, to actually, you can email, you can even email a famous blogger or author in your area and say, I have an article, what do you think of it? Just, not just tell them to promote it and they read it and say, this is interesting, I want to post about it. So there's, there's ways of getting it. So you can use actually email to connect to a blogger and then the blogger likes it and he posts it on his blog, you know. So there are many ways, but blog can have be very influential still, although, yeah. So these are the things you ask me why blogging is so powerful. Uh, to me, for my own learning, when you start, ref you need to reflect on your own learning. You have to reflect on your own research, your own ideas, your concepts. You could do that to Twitter, but 140 characters, I'm not sure where you're going to get deep reflection. You could do it concise and precise, but not deep. Uh, you could use Facebook in a, in a collaborative space, fine. But sometimes you need your own space. And blog is really your own space, like your own journal. And that's one reason I never, since 2007, I never published a journal. Personally, I, I have some publication journal with co-writers and so on, but not my own. It's because, why? I have my own journal, uh, okay? That's my blog. And I, I challenge any any journal, if I were to publish any journal, I maybe get 10 views, 5 views, 6 views. I might get cited fine, but to me, the more important is your ideas get exposed. If you write, uh, you know, and, and this is where uh, uh, blogging, uh, okay, blogging is a very powerful tool. You know, you can use it to connect to people. You can use it to reflect your own thinking, writing. And you can see all these words I put in there. Okay. Okay, uh, let me just check the chat. Of course, I could do a workshop on blogging, but... Uh, uh, okay. But uh, blogging needs its own time. But a lot of people, blogging is a very hard work. You can ask anybody that has blogged for several years. It's a lot of hard work. But... Uh, like I used to blog every day, every two days, and every then it went to every week, and I was like every month because I do all the things, right? But I keep it going, you know. Just sh shoot once in a while. You, I mean, to be a f if you want to be a famous, I can give you tips. I know what is to be a really famous blog. I haven't gone that approach because I want to. I use my blog to pro post original stuff. I mean, my own ideas instead of just posting other people's uh, articles. But if you want to become a famous blog, it's very easy. 
you know, I, I know most of the tricks. So if you want to know that, but that's not to me as a researcher or or thinker or independent, you want to post your own ideas. And that's the challenge when you start posting your own ideas and people reading it. Because you can easily post a blog sharing this famous article, this famous video, blah blah, and your blog becomes very popular. But and again, you just collect, you're creating. But as as an as an academic or an inventor or a creator or innovator, you also want to publish your own ideas. And this is the challenge: how good are you in expressing your ideas? And that's where blogging helps you. Maybe a blog will not make become famous, but it enables you, empowers you to keep on improving the way you express yourself and be creative about it. And and you can challenge yourself. And it's very time consuming, but to me, the most impactful tool of my own learning has always been the blog, because that's where I, I usually do most of my reflections. Okay, but it can be a lonely affair. It can be a very lonely affair. So what you should do, as I said, you, you blog post it, then you put it on Facebook or you put it on Twitter, and you'd be surprised. My blogs has no comments because most of the discussions in, in my blog posts are not happening in, in the blog. It's happening in Facebook. It's happening in Twitter. It's happening in SlideShare because most of my, my – my, yeah. You can put it all the way. Most of my blog posts are no longer blog posts. It's just sharing my workshops and so on. So, but most of the conversation does not happen in the blog. It happens in Facebook or other social media tools. But it's a very good tool to have your own space where you share and reflect upon what you have done in terms of learning, research, and teaching, and so on. Okay. So, so blog is still a very powerful tool. Okay. So these are these are there are many blogging tools. Okay, but this Blogger and WordPress and Tumblr. I use Blogger, but most professionals use WordPress. Okay, they consider it the best. But to me, I, I just want to have a place to post my stuff, and I use a lot of Google stuff. And Blogger is owned by Google. It makes my life very easy. One login, go in, do my stuff. And also, good thing about Blogger is when you use Blogger, it's very, it's actually more searchable than WordPress. Because Google owns Blogger, and since Google owns Blogger, definitely is going to make it more searchable in Google uh, as a result. So if you ask me, if you had to choose between three, th if you're talking about design, WordPress is probably better. But if you're talking about impact quickly and so on, to me, still Blogger is, 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 is a better tool. Okay, maybe Tumblr also is very powerful because they have a very powerful community. Okay. Okay, some people have to leave now. I know I'm going beyond my time. I'm really sorry about that. Uh, but I, I think we just go on a bit longer, uh, if you don't mind. If you want me to stop now, I can stop now. Uh, or I can continue a bit more. We can maybe take a break. You want to take a two-minute break? <laughs> don't worry, the recording will, 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 will continue. Uh, you know... I, I'm not sure because Vasuda Kama didn't give me a time to finish. He just gave me a time to start. <laughs> prof, the prof was, uh, prof was uh, Vasuda. <laughs> okay. Okay. Don't worry. We are slide 49. We only had to go to 70. And most of my slides are transition slides. So we, we, sh we should be done in about 20 minutes. Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry. She had it told me one hour. Hmm. I'm so sorry. I'm so used to anything I do these days is usually half a day or one day. So, uh, but don't worry. We will make the recording available for those who cannot continue. Uh, so it's not a problem. It's not like a normal lecture with which everything I said is is lost in the lecture. Okay. So let's continue. Okay. Okay. So how to collect my research data? Okay, we're not going to spend so much time. Uh, if if you if you don't do it face to face, uh, in our university, uh, Survey Monkey is very popular. It's one of those tools too, but it's commercial also. They have free version, commercial Survey Monkey. But if you ask me, you could use Google Forms. Okay, Google Forms. I mean, if you want to online survey and so on, Google Forms or it's in in Google Docs, you can actually do Google Forms. It's, it's a very nice tool. It's not as powerful as Survey Monkey, but it's free and you can have unlimited respondents. Unlimited. You can, if you want to have 10,000 respondents, no problem. It allows you to do that. So, so Google Docs is, is, is very powerful in that sense. Okay. Uh, in Google Docs, you must click on Google. This is another thing we won't have time to cover. But in Google Docs, there's something called Google Forms. And when you click on that, you can create your survey. Okay. And then you have Paul Daddy called. And there's a lot of other tools. But if you ask me... Uh, if you're going to start off doing research with online surveys, just start with Google Docs and then use the inside Google Docs or if you want to call Google Drive, they have something called Google Forms. Okay. So, yeah, they have poll. That is another tool that allows you to do polls, uh, social media, and then you have called. There's a lot of tools out there, but I don't want to cover it today. 
I just wanted to focus on two tools. Uh, like cause our university used SurveyMonkey. So I know it's been very helpful for our university. We have actually a commercial license of SurveyMonkey. But it's, it's used for a few people in our university. But a lot of people I'm introducing Google Docs because it's free. Uh, it is, it's limited, but you can export your data to Excel. Okay. Since you can export your data to Excel, you can import it into SPSS or whatever. So you could easily use uh, Google Docs, or, which inside is called Google Forms. I just say Google Forms. When you use Google Forms, the, the, they give you bar charts and pie charts and so on. But of course, if you're doing a PhD research, you want to do dump it into SPSS. So what it does allow you is to export it as an Excel file. And from the Excel file, you can import it to your SPSS. Okay. So... Yeah, uh, that's it. Okay, we're not going to spend too much time on that. Okay, so now we have looked at uh, research. Uh, so now we're going to do peer review. You want your content to be peer reviewed. Uh, we already talked about LinkedIn, Facebook, and so on. But if you ask me, uh, and you, how do we use social media to get feedback on our research? Okay. Hey. Okay. Okay, uh, we could use massive open online courses, actually join courses and have conversations with people in these various courses. Okay, but we're not going to do that. But see here, quality assurance, right? I want to be peer reviewed by real professionals, not some 14 year old kid, okay? <laughs> the problem with uh, social media is sometimes you don't know who is, if you put your article or link your article on social media, and who is actually giving feedback on your article, right? Because when you publish your journal, you get real people, I mean, not real people, I mean, you get experts actually doing peer review, maybe one or two or three or four. But when you do online, you might get 20 or 30 reviews saying, ha ha, very nice, hoo hoo. You know, so you want to get uh, reviewed by some experts. And, and sometimes it's difficult to know when you're using Facebook and Twitter. So there are actually tools for that. And one of them is ResearchGate, okay? Okay, I, I don't use much because I don't publish in convention journal. But let's ask a question, okay? How many of you are using ResearchGate? Wait, so many knows. Is that yes or no? No. This is shocking. Especially if you're writing in English. I don't know if you're writing in different languages, but if you're writing in English, ResearchGate is the place to be. There's another place also, but this is uh, one of the growing, fast growing. And in IMU now, we've, we've got a lot of lectures to, to, uh, to join ResearchGate. Okay. I'm surprised there's so many knows here. Okay. So please promise me, just create an account in ResearchGate after this, okay? Okay, so there's a lot of no's here. Uh, I'll share the results, huh? you can see the results here. Uh, 33 of you have said that, or more than 50% have said, no, I do not use uh, ResearchGate. And then we have another 12 of you that says, yes, I use ResearchGate. Okay. Do you know research gives ranking on the universities also on, on publications and citations and, 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 and active uh, participants? Okay. Is it free? Yes. Uh, okay. I'm not sure they have a commercial version, but I know I don't think anybody in IMU is using it for commercial, just using the free version. I'm not sure whether they have a commercial version. Okay. So you see, most are you not using it. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to end the poll. Okay. So here. You can find over 80 million publications on ResearchGate. This is the latest I got from the webpage, by the way. 7 million researchers are on ResearchGate. So when you go to ResearchGate, you're mixing around with people that are researchers for sure. Okay. And 1 million answers to research questions. Okay. So people are, you know, so, you, so in other words, you can use ResearchGate to ask questions. And you'd be surprised a lot of people want to share their opinions or feedback on your questions or answers. You can use it. A lot of people now, what they do is they publish in a journal uh, and also they make it available as a PDF file in their research gate and they get a lot of uh, uh, citations and, and views through research gate. This should become a vehicle for them to promote their article, promote their ideas, to interact with, have those conversations in research gate. Okay? So see, as research gate is a Facebook for researchers. <laughs> okay? So don't shy away from research gates. Okay, I shy away because I I, I don't <laughs> I'm not interested in publishing journals, so I don't use it. But I know for my a lot of faculty in, in IMU use it, and they find it very beneficial. You know, so research gate is a very powerful tool. Okay, so it's another way. And if you don't want to use this, you could use 
academia, okay? They even state on that I, uh, the latest 73% boost in citation. They already say papers upload academia received 73% boost in citation over five, five years. Whatever that means, that's not the issue. But the fact is that the, the more you use uh, uh, academia, uh, you, you're likely your, your citation might go up because it, it, it exposes to a big community, okay? So please, uh, let's just do a poll. I just want to find out how many. I'll surprise Sophie on research case. So please do that. Let's. I have you on. Uh, no, just. Okay. 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 Here again, uh, not so many using. Okay. No, again, majority is yeah, still. Okay. Uh, I can see here. Okay, based on the latest of done, doing the poll, we have uh, 28 says no. And 17 says yes. Okay, let's share the results. I'm sharing the results with you now. You can mouse over the big bars and see what's happening. <laughs> okay, it doesn't option. It doesn't say yes or no. It just shows. Okay, you can see here it's increasing. No, uh, it's now 40. Don't look at the percentages because the percentage here is messed up. It doesn't make sense. But look at the numbers. 30 are saying no, and 17 are saying yes. That means more than yeah. So the same, uh, as far as I know, you, you have to uh, create an account. There's no harm having an account in both. Uh, there are actually other tools, but I'm just saying these are the two big ones, uh, Academia and Research, as far as I know. Uh, so these two have an account. So you have now Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Academia. You just create an account, and it, it, but the thing is, you must remember there are laws actually. If you have published your article in journals, they have actually laws saying, that's why I don't like what publishing is, is that they state that you can only use, you cannot actually publish your, your article in academia, but, but research still do it. They publish the article, they share a link to the article in, or they share the abstract of the article and link it to in academia or in research gate. Okay. Okay. And you can use it to collaborate. Why not? You link up with them. Maybe you won't have, you, you, you move the discussion into Facebook or, or LinkedIn, but you connect with them. See, the point with ResearchGate, it's much easier to connect with relevant researchers there because ResearchGate is already a research focus. LinkedIn is more professional business, whatever. Uh, Facebook is fun, but also can do it. Uh, you have uh, Twitter, it can be all over the place. But these two are specifically for academics, basically, mostly. Uh, so that's where you find your, 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 your own uh, well, I can say species <laughs> to connect with. Uh, okay. Okay, WhatsApp, Telegram. I, I, I start using a lot of Telegram, but that's to, to collaborate. Telegram is really well, uh, really fun. I mean, not really well, really fun. I use the WhatsApp. I haven't used much. I use it for social thing, but Telegram I use actually much for pro professional collaboration work and so on. So Telegram is a very useful tool. So if you have a chance uh, to try a Telegram, Telegram is very similar to WhatsApp, but the thing about Telegram is you can upload any type of files, whether it's Word file, micro, uh, video. It's like WhatsApp uses videos and pictures, but in Telegram you can upload anything. And I found it actually faster. And you can install Telegram on your computer or notebook. I'm not sure whether you can do that with WhatsApp. So in that sense, I found. Telegram much more flexible for collaborative work. Okay. Okay, so now we talk about publish. Where to publish, okay? Uh, okay, this is the problem with traditional methods, okay? One is the text of books and journal articles are inex inaccessible to those without subscription libraries. This is the oxymoron, right? You publish in a journal and the journal is closed unless only people can view your article for those who paid to use the databases. Okay. Okay, here's one more question. Does ResearchGate require institution IDs to register? Uh, I'm not sure about that. I can't answer that question. But I, as far as I know, you can create uh, institution groups there. So the ResearchGate there. Yeah. Okay. But I think the best thing is you create an account there and you and you explore on how, how it does. Yes, it requires. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, somebody says yes, it requires. Okay, I'm not an expert on research. Okay, I'm just saying explore it. Okay, again, the problem with traditional methods is the texts of books and journal articles are inaccessible to those without subscription or libraries. This is one of the oxymorons, right? You spend all the time writing a, a research, you publish it in a journal, and you want it to be read so you can get a feedback and also citation. What you do is you publish in a journal, if you publish in a very exclusive journal, is that only people that can afford to, to, to subscribe to the database can read the article. You know, how sad is that? If you ask me now, okay, you, you might get read, you might get... It, to me, if you put all this effort into your research work, you should, it should be open as much as possible so people can actually benefit from it and also hopefully then uh, make sense of it and then also if cited and so on. But that's what happens with commercial database. They don't. Okay. Same with journal articles and books are rarely picked up by media. This is another problem. Is, is who reads journals and, and, and academic books? Academics. You know, how many professional professionals in the professional fields go and read an academic journal? Very few. And that's one of the reasons if you blog, maybe people discover your idea and, and all use other forms of social media. This is one of the challenges, okay? Outputs are often fairly long and language that sometimes meaningful only to all that can... In other words, the whole concept of, of many uh, articles, the way it's written, is so not readable for people outside the academic world. You know, you have think maybe you felt that oh, I've used the most fantastic jargons. I have I've done amazing, people. but the essence is nobody understands what you've written except the experts or the academics, because your language they're using is so complicated and so much. You're using SPSS standard deviation, blah blah blah, deviation, uh, distribution, uh, calculation, blah 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 blah, and and and, and essence, it, it doesn't really make a difference on the research, but it looks nice and you get your PhD. I'm not saying that, but this is one of the challenges. It's not readable. Okay, that's why my my main thing is. Is often many articles they are they are peer reviewed they get accepted but for the common human being it's not readable and that makes it uh, a problem if you want it to be widely read and your idea wants to be exposed okay and then the other last one is this reflects one way experts only uh, if you go to most journals is there any conversations in the journal does it allow for comments on each article I think now they're starting but in the previous when you go to a journal the article is just there like a link or you open up the PDF file there's no like chat box I can chat and give comments on the article directly you know it's only the few so it, it's very it's very lifeless uh, that's one of the things I think they're working on it but it has still a long way to go to reach that active and life that the social media has compared to going into a journal that is just articles and very little conversation around each article okay uh, so there's a lot of issues here and resentment also okay so but there's, a, there's an alternative there are what you call open access journals and you can see the increase here this is only 2013 there's more and more uh, Articles now searchable in the what you call directory of open access journals. When you publish uh, publish an open access journal, that means you're going to be using Creative Commons license. That means anybody can read your article. Anybody that searched for your article can read it. Don't need to subscribe to any databases. And a lot more people now are publishing here. Okay, uh, are doing that. So that's very powerful with open access journals. Okay. Uh, so if you ask me if I were to publish I would not even think about even if they pay me 10,000 ringgit or $10,000 I would not publish in a closed uh, subscription based uh, journal uh, what do you call it publication but of course as an academic I'm not an academic so I don't have to worry about that but if you as an academic you should worry about because you have to think about impact factor and so on but I'm just saying my personal opinion uh, but the good thing is open access is more widely read now uh, than it was previously I don't know if it's, it's not as read as maybe the subscribed uh, databases but increasingly so there is opportunity for making your uh, paper available in open access journals and getting reviewed and also getting it cited and, and so on okay and you can share it to videos if you have videos you can use YouTube you can use uh, teacher to Vimeo iTunes you uh, these are just some examples uh, presentation like I shared my through SlideShare some people use Prezi you have Heiko deck you have, they have many more tools these are just some common tools okay and then you have uh, this is uh, probably the best place if you want to publish your article and you don't want to publish in any journal, you just want to publish it. Uh, you have uh, Scribit or Isu. Uh, these are uh, websites that convert your file into an ebook format. Okay, so these are two very, they have huge communities. I don't know Scribit how many millions in the community. Uh, I have one uh, in Malaysia called Professor Amin, uh, which is our uh, chairman of National Elan Committee. He's the chairman of the National e Learning Committee. He he he's still published in journals, but much of his stuff now he publishes through Scribit, 
or script. And he has generated millions, millions of views through it. Uh, and that has helped him to get motivation to publish. And he, and he feels that, you know, when I publish here, I, I feel better because I can feel it's getting exposure. And from that, you're getting feedback through various means, you know. But will it impact the impact factor? <laughs> That's another issue, okay. Uh, so I, today, we have been going on for two hours. Uh, I hope I have not overwhelmed you in any way. Uh that's why I have probably one hour of webinars. <laughs> I usually do half a day or one day. Uh, okay, but I just want to share with you the last my last uh, wisdom, if you can call it wisdom, moving forward. Okay, uh, this is use social media to connect with other researchers and educators around the world. So use it to connect, use it to discover your latest research, use it to collaborate, use it to promote your own research. Use it to engage, to get feedback and peer reviews and so on. Not only with the academics, with the public and also the corporate side and even the government side. Engage and then publish. Publish in open access journals if you can. Share your research in creative ways. Don't have to be text. You know That's why uh, e-learning professionals, don't just... Your research should not only be in text. I mean, we're in we 2015 now. You can share it through videos. You can publish. You can you can elaborate in, in words, in, in expressions. You can have it in a paper. You can do create videos out of it and, and so on. And be who you want to be. And final, my final note of wisdom is, finally, use social media to amplify the impact of your research and impact factor in, in terms of your publication journals. So do both. And but if you use both, it's much more powerful than using one by itself. Okay. So before we end, uh, I would like to say thank you very much to Prof. Uh, Prof. Vasuta Kamat. I'm sorry I missed your SMS, only one hour, <laughs> but it doesn't matter because we this is recorded. So whoever missed it can see the recording later. And thank you very much. And also thank you to all the participants in the chat box. You were great. And also, Prof, I special thanks to Prof Karim. He, he, he became my assistant with a lot of links and so on. But all of you were really great. And I hope that uh, you enjoyed the session. And the URL for this session will be available on Monday. I'll share it with Professor Vasudha Kamat. And I'll also share all the places, whoever wants to watch it. And do you have any other questions before we close the, the, the session? Any more questions? And Dr. Jai also from our group, LIC. <laughs> There's so many people here. Uh, the chat book has been very lively. I don't know if that's my fault or... Uh, I think it's not my fault. It's the participants that participate were already proactive in sharing. <laughs> uh, so, who, no questions? Are we done? Can we give a clap to ourselves for being all active in this session? Can we just give a clap? Do you know how to give a clap on this thing or not? <laughs> Okay, this is how you give a clap, okay? <laughs> and don't worry, if you're confused, that means you're infused. That means that you learn something. If you're not confused, you haven't learned anything. So I'm not worried about being confused. The thing is now you have the slides, the recording will be made available later. And actually, if you search Google some of the stuff that I talked about, you will, as you as you explore, you will discover more. I think my my job today was to try to get you excited about it and, and sparkle some ideas, and from there you can move on, okay? Uh, uh, and if you want to to find my uh, blog, okay, uh, it's uh, okay. Let me just find the my last my last sharing my last self promotion. <laughs> okay, I published ninety three slide shares. Okay, uh, you can see here. You can see here uh, all the presentation. Most is from workshops and talks and so on. So if you're interested uh, and so on, so you can find it there. Uh, what about crowdsourcing? Crowdsourcing is the idea of getting people together and making things happen, creating value. Uh, it can be done. There's a lot of things people do now to do on... Uh, uh, you can do on research crowdsourcing, why not? But uh, I think it's a lot done to help people to, to create new products and some crowdsourcing to create new, even write books. Crowdsourcing has become more and more uh, powerful. And Ariana Roy says, I'm inspirational. Oh, thank you. I'm an inspiration. Wow, okay. How do we contact you? Uh, you can actually... Uh, uh, let me share my Gmail. This is top secret. You must tell no one about my Gmail. Top secret. Uh, okay. That's my Gmail there. <laughs> uh, okay. I only share my Gmail. My email, for university email, is very secret. <laughs> okay. So, have joy with the recording. So, are we done or not? You know, the thing, as I say, every time I finish an online session... People don't leave the classroom. Is it because they have left the classroom already or they're just going on chatting? People like to chat. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, sorry, you didn't see my Gmail. The you pass by, you can go back and see the. Okay, there we go. Uh, okay, so thank you very much, and I, I really enjoyed today. We, we really reached seventy. I think we had once we had seventy people at the same time, which is okay, not bad. <laughs> On a Sunday, one thirty in, in Malaysia, in 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 India it was eleven o'clock. So okay, thank you very much. I'm going to close the session, and we stay in touch. And I need to get back to my prayers and fasting. I'm fasting today. Uh, so I'm very dry. My mouth is getting dry. Okay, bye everyone. Take care. And uh, here's my contact, by the way. It's, I forgot to share my contact. These are, here's my contact. It's in the slides. Why am I... Uh, okay, here's my contact here. All the details here. Oh no, that's my blog, sorry. Uh, okay, here we go. Here. <laughs> take a picture of this one. Just take a picture. <laughs> uh, I forgot what my slide was about. Okay, anyway. Okay, thank you very much. And again, thank you, Prof. Vasudakam, for inviting me. This is my second time I'm doing this same presentation two years later. Has improvised a bit. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you very much. I'm out, out of here now. Okay, I'm going to close the show. So again, thank you. Uh, okay, I'm going to end the session now. I'm counting down. Ten. If you don't kick yourself out, I'm going to kick you out of this session, okay? Ten. Nine. Eight, seven, six. Please leave the classroom. Where does this happen? Face to face doesn't happen. People have left the classroom. Here is still people here. Leave the classroom. I don't like to kick people out of classroom, but I have to do it. Four, three, two.